All right, moving along with adjustable props. Let's talk about the Copper's Aromatic. I thought it was Compers, but I wrote it this way. Copper's Automatic. Pitch, automatic, pitch, change, propeller. <laughs> now what is very sad is I used to have one of these and I'm still sore about it. Somebody walked away with it and I could have showed it to you and you would be like, oh yeah, that's really weird. So it's the aromatic. The aromatic. This is a really interesting airplane propeller and it almost hurts your brain just to try and figure out how it works. And so what if this propeller is, you can see it's a wood prop. It's got the metal tipping on it. Metal tipping is for yeah, fod protection, especially on the ground. And if we dissect a little bit more, we can see we have counterweight sticking out on there. And not only that, look how the blades, it, looks like they are pretty much sitting horizontal. Yeah. No, Don't look no. at the hub. <coughs> Don't look at the hub. They, they look offset. Mm -hmm. It's more or less level. Yeah. The, the hub is offset. But the hub is definitely offset. Mm -hmm. The blades aren't sitting at that angle. No. No. So it's a strange little monster of a prop. What is this right here? Speaker? It's a Venturi. It operates the suction for the, to drive the instruments inside. Yeah, that's a three inch. It looks like there's a two inch right there. Notice that the Taylor Craft has the same thing, has a much smaller one. So anyway, this particular prop, I'll write this down, the aromatic, um, automatically, prop, automatically changes pitch, changes pitch in response to operational forces. There's actually this, co this company, or at least a, I believe was sold, and there's actually a person that owns this now. And I last time I looked, they lost their type certificate. So they can't build this prop for type certificated aircraft, but you can buy it for home built aircraft. And he's still making these things and still working on them. So it's really kind of interesting. So, like I said, I don't want you to have to write all this down, but if you can just kind of sit back and <laughs> enjoy with them. So, um, but you can remember, that's all I need you to remember, the aromatic operational forces, and we'll see where we go with this. So, uh, places the best load on the engine for optimal performance. So, at high power settings and low air speed, what angle do you think the prop wants? Low, 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 low Why low blade angle? High RPM, power, what's it doing? Less bite, less load. It's climbing. Probably climbing, yeah. Okay, so at a high air speed, it's sensing air. Now, how, first, go back a little bit. How is the prop going to be sensing speed? Prop governor? There's no prop governor. It's 100% automatic. You, as the pilot, have no control over this. Relative wind? What does the relative wind do? Angle of, attack. angle of attack. So we can sense that angle of attack, so to speak. So yeah, so at high air speed, moderate power, you're doing what now? Cruising. 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 Prop will be at uh, high, 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 blade. High, high blade angle. Take a big bite. Yep. Pilot has no input or control. None. All you have is throttle. Um, let's see. Yeah, I wrote, due to advances in constant speed props, they're not, they're rare, rarely ever used. Uh, okay, so theory of operation. 
Yeah. So you say engine to prop configuration is like spec to this engine, made for this engine, but I see a bunch of different airplanes having different. No, not the engine. It's. <laughs> Think so about it is the engine manufacturer makes an engine. They don't care what prop you use. That's none of their business. They yeah. sell it to an airframe manufacturer. The airframe manufacturer says, okay, this is our airframe. This is our engine. Let's pick that prop and put it on. Okay. So like for that one, that was, that was a Cessna. What? That was a Cessna. Looks like an Aronka. <laughs> looks like a Aronka to me. I could be wrong, but. Maybe not. It could be a 170, an old 170 or something. Look at that tail with the corrugated, yeah, with the corrugated stuff. Hey, you might be right. Maybe an old Cessna 170. Um, but it has the bars in there, so I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so you could just kind of run whatever prop or? Nope, it has to be on the type certificate data sheet. Oh. Or let's just say we pulled up, and let's say this was a Cessna 170, and it was only type certificated to have, let's say, a certain sense niche and certain Macaulay props. Mm -hmm. And you and I go into business for ourselves making propellers, and we want to sell to these guys. So what do we do? Go out and get a type supplement to the type certificate, which is what MT Propellers is doing for all these planes now. So then you buy the prop, it comes with this paperwork, you pull it out, it has STC, you fill out a form 337, IA approves it because you have accept, uh, approved data, put them together, put the prop on, you're good to go. But without that STC, you're not doing anything on a... So basically, if you just buy that prop, that whole setup for the engine, and it comes with the, it comes with the paper... That says you can put it on your airplane? Yeah. Then you can do it. But if it doesn't, you can't. It's just that simple. It really is. Except for the person who had to do the STC. It was very, very difficult. Very yes, laborious. Um, pilot has... Pilot has no input. In other words, there's no blue knob. Uh, uses natural forces acting on blades and counterweights to achieve proper blade angle. Let's go over here. Back to here. All right. So remember, we have aerodynamic twisting force and centrifugal twisting force, which I made the slide sideways because it makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? So aerodynamic twisting force, which is the wind coming over it and the center of pressure being where it is and the center of rotation being where it is, tends to drive the blade towards... Turn it into, feather. Feather. into a feather to a high blade. Feather. Okay, feather. And centrifugal twisting force tends to... Flatten, flatten it. Flatten it. Unless... I put a counterweight. Then it flips. Then it flips because you have, would do that on both sides. So centrifugal. So then in this case, it tends to. Well, it was trying to flatten it. Now it's going to drive it. This wants to be right here. Well, it's actually. I should have just drawn it here. So. Um, I'm sorry. I, I done screwed that up. Let's, let's uh, edit this part out. Okay. Let's just do it on this one. Counter rate wants to be here. <laughs> so where it was going to go to a low blade angle, now it's going to go to high blade angle so and that is centrifugal twisting force is going to do that so the prop we just looked at does have counterweights which is an interesting thing so um i don't want to belabor this too much we'll just say let me see the center line of the prop is behind the center line of the hub see it starts to be kind of the whole thing about this prop is it doesn't twist like this it actually twists like this yeah, it, I'm exaggerating, but it has kind of a funny thing to it. 
So because they do that, um, and I'll just read the notes to you and kind of, yeah. It took me like hours of just sitting here with this and playing with it and trying to figure it out before I finally got it. I'm like, wow, I got it. I'm never going to be able to explain this. <laughs> and so in some ways, I'm not even going to try is what I'm doing. So the center line of the prop is behind the center line of the hub. Um, that was page four. And then I go to another page four. That was nice because that's just a duplicate of the page I just have. So five. There we go. Uh, aerodynamic force helps with the pitch, pitch increasing effort. Of, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, I think it's just best to leave it at that. If you really want to know about it, I'll sit down and talk with you if you want to pull this book out. Well, that would be interesting. But Kevin, are, huh? are they interconnected? Like, or can the prop... They no, they can't do this. Okay, okay. They, well, can't, they, they can't, can't move independently. They, no, they are definitely pinned and geared in the middle. Okay. I guess that's another way of looking at it, how it's kind of showing that it, it uh, kind of rotates oh. back instead of rotating, how it, how it moves. Uh, aerodynamic force with the pitch increasing effort of the net centrifugal force acting on the masses of the blade. Kind of, yeah, see, see what I'm saying? Could that be the reason why the hub is... Not in line like that uh -huh. because of the awkward movement. Yep. The yep. Uh, take off the pitch, decreasing forces are greatest and will therefore move the blade to low pitch to permit the engine to develop full takeoff power. During climb, max power is made available due to the fact that the blade pitch increases as the velocity of the airplane increases by maintaining given cruising RPM, constant horsepower of the engine is available. Anyway, it's kind of a neat thing. I know. Let's see. The center line of the propeller is behind the center line of the hub. You can, you can grasp that. The blade moves forward of the hub of plane of rotation at low angles. So you have a low angle, which would be this way. It kind of moves forward. Um, blade moves behind at higher angles of attack. So that's the movement I'm talking about. So consider a prop in cruise flight. When the throttle, so we're up, we're cruising along. When the throttle is pushed forward, engine RPM and power increase. I'm with you so far. All right, an increase in RPM increases the twisting force, because we do have a counterweight. So it increases the centrifugal twisting force moment, which tends to tends to decrease blade angle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's consider, okay, that means we're considering just the blade. So decrease blade angle. Uh, don't consider the counterweight. Okay. Uh, because if, if the statement is increase RPM, increases centrifugal twisting moment, which tends to decrease blade angle, then we're not considering the counterweight. All right. Increasing, the increasing lift caused by increased RPM and now it's moving faster through the air, so increased lift will cause the blade to move forward and help decrease the blade angle. Okay. Okay. Higher RPM means higher blade angle of attack, which moves the center of lift forward the blade, also causing the blade to decrease the angle. So there we go. Higher centrifugal force plus angle of attack helped to um, decrease blade angle. As the aircraft accelerates, blade angle, the blade angle of attack starts to decrease and the center of lift moves back on the blade. This moves the blade to a higher angle. See, it gets complicated. So while the initial RPM increase acted on the counterweights to move the blades to high angle, the other forces, angle of attack, center of lift, exceeded the force on the counterweights and the blade went to low angle. However, as the center of lift moves forward, the force moves the blades to a high angle, is uh, increased along with increased RPM due to increased airspeed, acting on the counterweights, cause the prop to go to high angle. Told you, I don't want to hurt you. Um, so when you're at cruise, you initially accelerate, it's gonna drop your blade angle and then as, mm -hmm. and then it'll start to increase. Yeah, okay. so remember, it's working on all of the forces, including able, it, you know, it's just kind of a cool little thing. I'm not gonna test you on this. It's like, okay, if I say aromatic. It's just gonna allow your yeah. RPM to climb So this is forces which increase blade angle, forces that decrease. So let's look at forces that decrease blade angle. So we want higher RPM, right? Um, we've got 
centrifugal force acting on this, which tends to want to bring it to a flat angle. Um, definitely the center of the aerodynamics um, are going to shift around uh, and it changes where the blade is in, the, in rotation. See the plane of rotation changes. Now let's look at forces which increase the blade angle, which the counterweights come into play now. Well, what are we doing? Counterweights were incre uh, increasing blade angle, so higher airspeed, less RPM. So less RPM would mean less centrifugal force on the blade, which would allow the counterweight to move forward, because obviously the counterweight must be smaller than the mass of the blade, otherwise it would shift it the other way. And then you're going to have a shift in your center of pressure, center of lift on the blade. Kind of follow? Yeah. All right, you asked in the middle what's going on. So you gotta have a synchronizer gear to keep them always the same. Uh, blades are wood, hub is metal. There's a synchronizer in the hub that ensures the blades move together. You do have stop bolts that set the high and low blade angles. Can't let it go. Um, yeah. So I I don't know. It's really cool, though, isn't it? It's like, why? I don't know. Yeah. So I've got, like, so many pages in here, and I'm like, what the heck? So uh, maintenance, what are we looking for for maintenance? Yeah. Cracks? Inspecting counterweights, make sure there's no cracks on the blade hang the hangers. Uh, this does not have a fluid inside. The, the gears wouldn't be oiled or anything? Uh, I guess it could be. Yeah, you're right. So it could be some fluid. It's always a good answer, though. Yep. These blades should move by hand real easy. Okay. Whenever you're talking about any type of blade that moves in a hub, you want to grab the blade on the tip and, and see if it rocks back and forth. A little bit of movement is allowed. Not a lot. You hear a clunk, clunk, clunk. You got a problem. That's yeah. not something you want to be flying around in. Okay. No. You said this is supposed to move easily by hand. Yes. How do you know if there's a problem with it being too loose? No. So rocking back and forth is one thing. Grabbing it and moving it. The free play? Yeah, the free play. Yeah. That's bad. Okay. So, right. One, two, three. I got like... Four page fours and five pages. I got, I got two of everything. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, there we go. So. A, B. Let's go with this one. I still can't believe that they tried to load my toolbox from the side of the bed. The, the dude took the portal and went up and tried to go up and over the side of my bed. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Back at it. So, okay, inspection. Uh, what about, I haven't heard anything about uh, tracking. Sweet. Track, oh, very good. Tracking, yeah. What's the maximum? Uh, 
Well, then what's this one going to be? 1A. Okay. Um, you said lubrication. Oil. Yeah, I was thinking oil, but more... Hub contains an oil supply. It must be checked every 100 hours annually. Level too high it causes sluggish or erratic operation. Check for leaky seals at the hub. Look at you. Okay. Teeth clearances for the, the gear? Okay, so those were ground adjustable slash automatic. So ground adjustable, we looked at one, same theory. Then we had automatic, which has no pilot input. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we move over to controllable. Controllable props. Now we've now this is the first one we're going to look at that has some sort of pilot input to what's going on. So now we're going to let the loose nut behind the yoke have some control over what's happening. All right. So this allows pilot uh, to select a blade angle. No, since I've been here, I used it for like three, four classes. Well, it's interesting because on Bartstone or somebody in Willows, California is selling one. Is it black? It doesn't have a price on it, but it's just interesting. That's our, that's Willows. It's not that far away. I'm just going to give a call. So <laughs> that was just black. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't quite airworthy. It had some, like, few pieces missing on it. Wouldn't that be wild? It's our problem. I know, and then you, I knew the person. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yep, yeah, that's what happened there. Uh, blade, I don't know what I was going to write. Um, so within W I T H within the props design. So would you say this is similar to the one that was on your uh, X plane? The no, that you did? absolutely not. So thank you for asking. Though a controllable prop that allows the pilot to select a blade angle is very specific. The one I showed you is a constant speed propeller that allows the pilot to select. The RPM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You can't select the RPM. You select the blade angle. So they're independent. Right. So now the one I showed you an X plane, the constant speed, which is what everything has nowadays, constant speed. So if I select an RPM in my plane, say I want 2,200 RPM, I pull back all the way I want, and it's going to hold it at 2,200 RPM as I go up. Why? Because that blade is going to flatten and flatten and flatten. It'll do whatever it takes to keep it at 2200 RPM. If I dive down at the ground, it's going to go all the way to the highest pitch possible until it hits its stops, trying to keep that engine from going beyond 2200 RPM. Mm -hmm. It just... Cruise control. Cruise control. Yeah. Okay. All right. But a controllable pitch prop doesn't do that. I say, I want high blade or I want low blade. And it goes all the way this way or all the way that way. Or some of them in the middle, but if I select, if I'm flying along and I select 2200 RPM and I pull back and I start to go up, RPM is going to start dropping off. Why? Because I set the blade angle. It's going to stay at that angle. Dive at the ground and stay at that angle. It's like getting out and adjusting a ground adjustable. It's like, stop, everybody just you know, kind of get out. I get back in, you know. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, uh, this may be, may be um, a two position, two position prop. So in other words, high, low, that's all you got. Um, or uh, multiple angles. High, medium, low, or infinitely variable. You have high and low and you get anything in between. Wouldn't that be constant speed, kind of? No, because you, again, are the one that switches it. Okay. So you have blade angle one, two, three, four. So you, when you set it, it's going to state that blade angle regardless of what you do. 
A constant speed is constantly looking to keep it automatically, the blade, the RPM set by adjusting the blade angle. Follow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's talk about the Beach Roby. Beach Roby. Uh huh? The Beach Roby. Was similar to the aromatic that we looked at in that it's wood with a metal hub. It's kind of pretty. Got some counterweights on it. But what you have here, this particular one was an electric one. So electric, remember, controllable, not constant speed. So there's a little switch in the cockpit where the pilot could select high angle or lower angle. And of course, if you were flying along straight and level and you selected higher angle, you're going to watch your RPM slow down, your manifold pressure come up a little bit. If you select the other way, it's going to go, you know, uh, RPM will go up, manifold will go down a little bit. So it just had this little, little gear. Now, um, I have not seen this, but apparently some of them, I thought I had a picture, actually had a little, like, a, well, you wouldn't know. But back when I was a kid, that meant roll your window down. Oh, yeah. You guys like, oh, yeah. yeah. Nowadays it's, you know. <laughs> but we had little cranks. And you had to, so this had a little crank in the, um, in the cockpit on the instrument panel. And that crank would just turn this little gear, and that gear would turn this big gear, and that big gear would turn the props. And, of course, I see something like that, and I go, whoa, how are they doing that? Because this part here is spinning around. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, a couple, uh, 2,500 RPM. And obviously that ain't spinning around because it'll rank the wires out. Well, it had really, really long wires, and it just split now. So, and then it gets the end of that, and then spinning the direction. Yeah, and so kind of look at this and go, okay, I think I can make heads or tails of this. Let me see. This should be over, let me see, oh. here, so it makes more sense. We can see it. Uh, I guess. That makes perfect sense, it's doesn't it? It's going to push that, those uh, arms yeah. in. It's gonna, yeah. All right, so here we have a bearing, okay. and you have this pin. Mm -hmm. So this pin will ride in these slots. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, and this lug, imagine, if you will, if it's not centered, on the prop, but off-centered that fit kind of in a hole here. So now you can see that these arms in the inner race are spinning with the propeller. So these are these arms are spinning around real fast, but attached to this. So this piece and this piece are spinning. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, but yet this lug right here, it ain't spinning. It's just stuck in one of these grooves right here. It's stationary. So as I turn this crank and this moves, then this lug is going to slide out on these slots. And as it goes out, then it pushes the arm out and the arm is set to this. And as it pushes the arm out, it rotates the hub back and forth. So it goes forwards. No, the blade's going to rotate just like that. But the hub itself is moving out. But in the middle of the hub is going to move in and out to do that. Right. Oh, yeah. So the blade doesn't. The blades don't move at all. They do. They do. I mean, they're, they're going around in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and they rotate. They don't change. They're not going forward or out. Yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that they they move yeah. out. Yeah. Physically, they physically move out a little bit. The blades? Yes. They do not. They're uh, stuck uh, in a hub. It's locked in and they just twist. Okay. But I think, imagine the, the, this right here, if the pin was right here, and it's allowed to rotate this way yeah. or this way. And that is locked into an arm. There's your arm. Right there, there's the arm. If you're looking at it the other way, and the arm is then attached to a race. And so this... This moves forward and back. You follow that? Yeah. So the actuator pin is attached to the arm. Yes. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm explaining the theory of operation. There we go. Kind of the same thing. I think this is it. Yeah, Beach Roby. So there we go. See, here's your arm, four, moving back and forth, right, four. Oh, it actually has words. Oh. <laughs> Wait, there's something that yeah. says what's going on. There's letters. That makes more sense. 
four. It's simple. The manual drive one. Okay, that's I told you that one had an electric. Manual drive, which is actually the cockpit, rotates a large gear. Two, uh, inside this gear, a bearing assembly. I showed you the bearing with the pin. Okay, so you have the the out, outer race is attached to two. The inner race is spinning with the prop. Uh, moves with the fingers fore and aft. This is a better picture right here. You can see how that finger is attached to that. And so if this moves forward, it will rotate the prop back this way. This is just, they, they don't have the pin here for that. Yeah. So the manual, the manual controlled one, that's going to be a multi. Infinitely variable is what I would call it. Yeah. Just turn a little bit. Yeah. So as a pilot, when you get ready to take off, you would start up your engine, you would run it, and you would turn it all the way to whatever, I would say out would be like, uh, out would be flat. I'm trying to think, what would I make it? Forward would be probably high RPM, so I'd rotate all the way forward to high RPM, and it would flatten out, and I would take off, and I would do my climb, and then, yeah, if I got to cruise, and then I would adjust the manifold, pull back the throttle, and screw until I got the manifold pressure I wanted. You now it's you wouldn't slow roll it as you're climbing. Like a, um, no, you just wait you no. And then back. Yeah, I wouldn't. Because you want to, yeah, you want to climb at a high RPM. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Beach Roby. Cool. Let's see, is there anything else I have to say about that, Beach Roby? Similar to aromatic wood blades, metal hub, bearings in the hub allow rotate external gear, uh, cockpit, electric, could be electric, could be manual. Um, there are, they, you do have to have stops in these. So there'd be mechanical stops. You could add um, other stops here, like uh, they might pin a gear or something so that gear can't go past there. You follow? Well, if you go to the other picture, I think they show where they just stop cutting the gears. Yep. All right. I don't know if that's accurate or not accurate, but it could be. Yeah. Well, does loss have a limit? So the, the limit to how much it can turn could be the amount of uh, length of the stops. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. But typically in something like that, they would make the slots the longest it would be for all applications, and then they would put a stop, build a stop into it for each individual application. Mm -hmm. But you're right, that definitely the limiting factor would be those slots, but you wouldn't want different slots for every model. So I think you'd either put a stop up here on the gears, um, or is, there'd be an internal stop that they're not showing because it's a little more complicated than what it is. But you want to look for that on any sort of changeable pitch propeller except for ground adjustable. Even the coppers, they had an internal stop. Uh, this would probably also have an internal stop. You'd want to, to limit it. I think they would just pin the gear out here, but I don't know, I could be wrong. Um, so, oops, what did I say? Oh, the electric one has micro switches. Right there, these are the micro switches. So, you can see right there, they uh, there's a stop right there. They just bolted it onto certain spots. It's only going to go that far. Uh, micro switches are little switches that'll that'll when it touches it, it'll turn it off. So like you could put something. I don't know exactly how this one works, where you have a switch and when the gear goes so far, it hits a switch and tells it to shut off. But it can go the other way. And there'll be a switch over here. It'll go this way until it hits this switch, and it won't go that way anymore. So you can go back and forth within that range. But no more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the electric motor one, if you lose power to that, you'd be screwed. Right? Probably, yeah. yeah. See, so I think but there's the micro I switch right there. And I think this right there touches that. So when this touches that, it's going to stop it from going that way. And there perhaps is another one over here that stops it the other way or mechanically stops it. I don't know. Because <laughs> like Sherman said, it, the low pitch, because you always have low and high pitch, the low pitch could be the slots inside. Don't know. Time to go. Also, Zerk fitting, which means it takes? Grease. Grease. 
boy, you can really ruin a prop by that thing. I guess you guys are leaving now. So, all right. We'll save that for tomorrow. <laughs> all right. So, I will just tell you this so you'll hear it a couple of times. You guys listen to that, uh, the Ask the A&Ps? I remember you talked about it. Yeah. Now, this is tricky, and I'll be honest. You have to be very careful and use the proper grease. You have to grease it the proper way with the proper amount. And one of the most common is the Hartzell uh, prop that we now have does take greasing, and it's part of the maintenance thing. But you're only allowed to put X number of ounces into the prop over its lifetime. And you have to pull out the opposite side, and you have to use the right grease. Well, it's changed over the years. You know, I remember, you know, back in the day, it was oh, you now they want like four pumps or four ounces, and you do it like every year. And and then some people, ah, I don't do that. And um, and at one point, it was like take the take it out, and it's changed anyway. So I was listening to that, and she was talking about oh, I just changed my prop or grease my prop. You know, you, you have the zerk on one side, mm -hmm. and you can't pump until it pressurizes out. Otherwise, you're blowing seals. Oh. So you take out the opposite zerk and you pump some in and it goes in. Right, we're going to watch a little video on that. All right, but she was talking about how many canisters it took to get degrees to go out the other side. Man, well, it's because pumping and pumping and pumping. you're not supposed to fill it full of grease until you just put a little bit just in. Like how cars do. I saw, I was like, how do you check how much? I was like, no, it's, it's, you're only supposed to put X number in every year and then... The idea is you put in X number every year and then you're supposed to overhaul it at so many years. Well, they kind of figured out that if you put this much every year, when you get to this year, you've put the maximum amount in, then you overhaul it. But if you fill it full of grease, then you off, oftentimes you get an imbalance in it and so you get a bad vibration going. So don't just go at these greasers like crazy. I mean, I, you won't catch me greasing a prop unless I really know what I'm doing there. <laughs> 